15 adrenaline pumping minutes. That's the maximum time this team has to tag, test, and release this massive 3,500 pound lion of the sea. First, they cover her eyes and give her a water supply. The next bit of poking and prodding allows them to draw blood and run a battery of tests. Little poke, guys, little poke. Then comes the moment that could change the tide when it comes to understanding great whites. They insert a homing device into that signature dorsal fin, essentially a built-in GPS that pings off of a satellite capable of tracking and monitoring the movements of the sharks anywhere they go in the world. Oh yeah, Mary Lee, big girl. Before we let her go, I named her Mary Lee after my mother because my parents have done so much, I was just waiting and waiting for a special shark to name after her. Oh, that's a bigger one. The man in charge of it all is Chris Fisher. He spends his life fishing for great white sharks to learn more about them. Hook up! Hook shark! Thank you. He invited us on board his ship O-Search, where he spends most of his days trying to crack the shark code. As a result of his work, each month a million people check his global shark tracking website to follow the sharks they've tagged, from Florida all the way up to New England and beyond. We're just cruising along here, having to see the Empire State yeah. Building, and it just, New Yorkers don't tend to think about sharks. That just uh, off the coast here, there's dun 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 dun. Yeah, percentage. sure. Oh yeah, they live here. With Jaws, Steven Spielberg single-handedly incited terror about what could be lurking close to shore. Now, almost 40 years later, Fisher is trying to dispel some of that fear and mystery by putting great whites on the map, literally. Are sharks coming closer than they used to? Nobody knows what they used to do. This is the first time we're establishing these tracks to understand what normal even is. People say, well, what's Mary Lee doing as she cruises up the southeastern coast of the United States? Fact is, we don't really know. See this little orange dot? That's Mary Lee. She is one of two North Atlantic great whites he caught in September just off the coast of Cape Cod. Mary Lee's track is a perfect example of why people don't really need to be worried about sharks when they go swimming. She has cruised the entire length of the eastern seaboard on the beach. In the past six months, she's traversed the length of the East Coast, hugging the shoreline from Massachusetts to Jacksonville, Florida. I had to call the authorities in Jacksonville Beach because Mary <laughs> Lee <so> <laughs> moved right in. Look at this, she oh, was within wow. 200 yards of a surf spot in a public pier. She then went back up to Rhode Island and was most recently spotted in the vicinity of Bermuda. Some environmentalists suggest that what you're doing is too invasive, that it actually harms the shark. We have the data now to understand that it's not that much stress and there's no time. What are you gonna do, sit back and chat about this for another day and let another 200,000 be finned? The real outrage, according to Fisher, should be at images like this rooftop in Hong Kong, covered in thousands of freshly sliced shark fins. Think about all the carcasses strewn out on the bottom of the ocean that are finless just for that one rooftop. These fins are then used to make a soup viewed by many Asians as a rare delicacy. You can't remove the apex predator from the ocean for a bowl of soup and expect the ocean to have a robust future. Holy. Fisher has joined forces with Greg Skomel, a marine biologist and one of the stars of Discovery Channel Shark Week. He and his team tagged a shark using a different technique. They successfully managed to harpoon a shark not far off the beaches of Cape Cod. This is amazing. If you told me four years ago that we'd be able to tag this many white sharks, I would have said, no, you're out of your mind. Why is Cape Cod such a hot spot? My guess is that, yeah, Cape Cod's a breeding site. I believe they'll be breeding there in the fall and early winter, but that's just my guess based on what I've seen around the world. Oh, search, oh, search, oh, search. Yeah. It's a contender. While a great deal of his research appears to be uncharted territory, he believes breeding is largely what drives a lot of their behavior. Now, the map on your left here are the mature female sharks, okay. and the map on the right is the mature male sharks. And usually, if you get the mature females and the mature males coming together, there's a reason for it that. doesn't, you don't have to be a rocket scientist <laughs> right. or a PhD to figure out maybe that is the breeding site. While these sharks are are the largest predatory fish on earth, Fisher says they've been given a bad rap. It's more dangerous to drive to the beach than to go swimming in the ocean. And we are hooked up, hooked up. With this team's groundbreaking research, they're hopeful they'll make some waves by replacing people's fear of sharks with curiosity.